In chapter 15, we look at uh, the effects of inflation on the economy, uh, both its causes and consequences, and the role that monetary policy plays in managing recessions. So monetary policy is all about uh, the central bank trying to influence the real economy, aggregate demand, C plus I plus G plus X minus M, uh, through the use of interest rates. So we've talked about fiscal policy, right? So government can use fiscal policy, whether that's automatic stabilizers or discretionary policy through changes in spending and taxation in order to try to boost aggregate demand during recessions. Uh, but there is also an effect on inflation during recessions also. And so we're going to look at that. Uh, how does inflation change during recessions? Is there an idea level in, of inflation? Do we want no inflation? Do we want a little bit of inflation? And how does the central bank actually respond uh, when there is a recession? And what can they do in order to influence the economy? So inflation uh, has a number of causes. Um, remember, we talked, as we'll see, we talked about how firms decide when to raise prices, when to raise wages, and those are going to be very much influenced by aggregate demand. And we're going to see that there's often a trade-off between inflation and unemployment, although that trade-off has uh, not been as strong recently as it was in the past. Um, we'll see that when the economy is depressed, uh, the central bank wants to reduce interest rates in order to try to spur investment spending uh, and consumer spending to some extent in order to try to boost aggregate demand. Um, and we'll also see that expectations are very important. And so it's the central bank, a lot of what the central bank does uh, is not just change interest rates, but try to change expectations of what inflation will be. So just a few terms that are important. We've talked about some of these already. Uh, so inflation is an increase in the general price level. And remember, that general price level can be uh, something like the consumer price index, which measures a basket of goods uh, that a typical household would buy. Uh, it could be the GDP deflator. It could be some other measure. Um, but those are the two that we're most generally going to talk about. And the CPI is the one that is most uh, commonly used. Zero inflation means a constant price level from year to year, and sometimes people think that that would be the optimal uh, level of inflation, but we'll see that for a number of reasons that may not be the case. Deflation means a decrease in the general price level, so actually prices going down. Uh, we haven't experienced that very much in the United States since the end of World War II. I think there have been two years uh, in which we've had deflation, although sometimes month, during the months we've had small pieces of deflation. But other economies have experienced deflation uh, more regularly. Japan, for instance, uh, since the 1990s has had many, many years of deflation. We want to contrast deflation with disinflation. So disinflation is a decrease in the rate of inflation. So inflation can still be positive, but it's going down. And so in the 1980s, we had really high inflation, and we needed some disinflation in order to bring it down. We can think of in inflation as a car going forward, zero inflation as a stopped car, deflation as a car going backward, and disinflation as a car going forward but slowing down. One important relationship uh, that's in, that we need to keep in mind is what's called the Fisher equation, and it relates the real interest rate and the nominal interest rate in inflation. Uh, and so we can put this in sort of any terms, but uh, one way to think about this is that the real interest rate is at least approximately equal to the nominal interest rate minus inflation. So when inflation is high, uh, the nominal interest rate is going to be high, right? Because we could also write this as the nominal interest rate is the real interest rate plus inflation. Um, what borrowers and lenders are really going to care about is the real inflation rate because those uh, inflated dollars will be what you pay your debt back with and what this uh, lender can use to go, then go buy things. So what's wrong with inflation, right? Is inflation necessarily a bad thing? A lot of people don't like inflation, um, and there's a number of reasons for that. One is that for people on a fixed nominal income, so if you're getting a pension, for example, higher inflation means that that nominal pension can buy less stuff, right? And so that's obviously a problem. Um, inflation from uh, a borrower's point of view can be a good thing, right? Because it can deflate the value of uh, that debt. Uh, but that means it's bad for creditors. So people who 
our lenders, um, so people who you know have a lot of savings, people who uh, get their money from uh, that type of, of lending, uh, inflation's a bad thing. Really high inflation can make the economy work less well. So you know one of the things that's important about prices is the signals that they send about how val how valuable things are. And so if there's high inflation, uh, that can create a lot of uncertainty. That can mean that it's hard to distinguish between whether prices are going up because of just inflation or whether prices are changing because there's a change in the relative demand. Um, and it can also mean that firms have to uh, keep changing their prices, which can cost some real, uh, real costs, right? So the time and effort to, to change your prices, we call those menu costs. One other thing to keep in mind is that uh, people often think in nominal terms. They don't think in real terms, right? So if they see the prices going up by 4%, even if their income is going up by 4 or 5%, they may not make that connection, right? And so that's often referred to as money illusion. And so people dislike inflation even when it may not be hurting them. Another reason that policymakers may dislike inflation is that there is a, a relationship between uh, how much inflation there is, which here is measured on the horizontal axis, and how uh, the ruling party does uh, in presidential elections. And so you can see there's a, a negative relationship. The lower is inflation, the better the ruling party does. And so there's an incentive for the ruling party to try to keep inflation low, right? If we kind of block out everything from 1976 over there's much less of a relationship, right? It's more random. Um, so you kind of want to keep inflation 4% or less. Maybe then, maybe then you're safe. What about deflation? So if inflation is bad, well, why don't we go for deflation? Unfortunately, deflation can be even worse than uh, high inflation. So if prices are falling, households may postpone their consumption, right? So if you think, all right, well, I need to buy a car, or I need to buy a washing machine, or I need to buy a refrigerator or a computer, uh, if there's deflation, those goods are going to be cheaper in nominal terms in the future. So you can just hold on to your money, wait six months, wait a year, uh, and then buy it. But that's going to decrease aggregate demand now, right? So that's like a negative shock to aggregate demand. Uh, and deflation increases the real debt. So remember we said inflation uh, decreases real debt. Well, deflation increases the real debt, which means that you might not have as much to spend uh, on other goods and services. So deflation can be actually a bigger problem than inflation. 